green open access, uh, it sounds it sounds good in theory. It lets lets the publishers work as they've always operated, the same journals, the same authors. Um, but what are the issues with it? What has led to experiments like gold open access, where you're you're taking a much stronger approach? One is limited scope. So uh, a study from a few years ago found that only about 12% of recent literature is actually archived somewhere else. That's a pretty small number. And a third of those end up on an individual homepage, which means they're, they're there, they're found, but uh, if there's any issue with the department, so let's say that they build a new website, they don't copy over people's homepages, uh, or the individuals using WordPress for their lab blog and they, they take it down after a couple of years. And those papers aren't really preserved in any meaningful way. Certainly not to the extent that publications are preserved. Uh, so any good, good publisher, of course, is maintaining backups. So even if the publisher's website goes down, they have a digital object identifier on your article, that can still be resolved to something the, some sort of archive that's preserving it. Um, because it, beyond just being a, a blog post or um, some information, I mean, this is part of the, the scholarly record. And so there is a point at which you want to make sure you're preserving it carefully. So if someone else is trying to read the citation five years down the road and look back at the paper, that they'll be able to. And if people are citing these additional green OA copies and they're going away, that could create, um, at the very least, uh, a headache for people trying to figure things out. So as I just mentioned, you, you use a lot of infrastructure. Um, you, you need to have the version on your lab page or the version on the repositories or building what are essentially the same database over and over and over and over again. Um, and then they're all in different places. So if you're trying to measure citations to your paper, likely Scopus Crossref are not picking up the, the citations to a, a green open access version of your article if it doesn't use that same DOI. So that's why there have been better experiments with taking some like in archive or bio archive, signed a DOI that can then transfer to the paper if it is published elsewhere. So you can collect all this together. So this would, of course, affect altmetrics as well, if you're looking at just in terms of how people are reading or downloading the work, and updates if you have to make a correction or, worst case scenario, a retraction. But that might not really be obvious to somebody who's just finding a green open access version. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.